Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it is Sunday, October the 2nd, <clears throat> 2021. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, sorry about the angle of the phone. It's got my head, my head looking tiny and my body looking big, which my body is big, but uh, yeah, the, it's because I got it tilted. It's the only way I can do it um, without holding it. So today, the um, chapter we're reading is John chapter 20, The Empty Tomb. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stones had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter, and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there. <clears throat> Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. I'm going to read that again. John chapter 20, verse 9. For as yet... They did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the, then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. It starts at verse 11. But Mary stood outside of the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbani, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to, the, go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father. And to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. The apostles commissioned. Then this, this starts at verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they, had saw, when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of, of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. And Jesus came to the doors, being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, 
Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be believe, unbelieving, but be believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. That was exclamation, sorry. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God, and my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Okay, let's go back and read real quick the focus insight. John, um, John 20. Uh, this pertains to John 21 through 31, the first Easter. John's account of the first Easter Sunday is part of a crucial body of evidence that underscores the resurrection as a historical fact. And we can we can also go for evidence of the, for the resurrection at Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8 for further study. And then the other focus, I have two focus group, two more. Um, John 20, and this pertains to John 20, verses 24 through 31. Skeptics, skeptics welcome. Although Thomas had traveled with Jesus and heard his teaching firsthand for at least three years, he still needed time, evidence, and personal persuasion before he would accept the resurrection. Jesus responded to his doubt by inviting him to check the facts. Oh, check the facts, right? Where's the fact check? Where's the che fact checkers? <laughs> Uh, okay, Jesus responded to his doubt by inviting him to check the facts. He presented his wounds for Thomas' inspection and did not scold him for wanting certainty. Jesus honors the mind and heart of every seeker or doubter. He knows that sur surrendering to him too easily often means that loyalty, loyalty to him can be torn apart when more questions arise. He applauds people who probe the corners of their doubts and fears in order to be sure of the truth. He even promised that the Spirit would aid those who seek to discover the facts about him. And you can read further at John 16, verses 12 through 16. The encounter with John, Thomas shows that God invites us to bring our doubts to him. He delights in hearing our arguments and questions, never shunning those who doubt him. The Christian to doubt him, the Christian faith, or the church. He does not want his people to fear tough questions. And a little bit more here. C.S. Lewis was a master of apologetics, the defense of Christianity through rational argument, but he also experienced seasons of crippling doubt. So if and there's a biography on uh, of C.S. Lewis on page 1276 of my Bible. Um Okay, maybe I'll read that that one later to you, but I don't know. Let's finish this one. Uh, John 20, verses 30 and 31. The purpose of John's gospel. Luke told his readers in the opening verses of Luke and Acts what those books are about and why, we, why he wrote them. But John hangs the key to his gospel at the back door of his narrative. This was a common practice in ancient readings. I, I'm sorry, guys, I wasn't paying attention. I was reading it, but I wasn't, I'm going to read it again. Luke told his readers the purpose of John's gospel. John 20, verses 30 and 31. Luke told his readers in the opening verses of Luke and Acts what those, bo what those books are about and why he wrote them, but John hangs the key to his gospel at the back door of his narrative. This was a common practice in ancient writings. What we would call a preface often appeared at the end of a book where it summarized the writer's purpose. John's preface tells us that he wanted his readers to find faith and life as a result of reading his narrative. For that reason, he included seven miraculous signs that Jesus that revealed Jesus at the authentic life-giving Son of God. And uh, you can also look at the seven signs of John's gospel at John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. All right, guys, that was my reading for the day. Um, <clears throat> may you all go out today and have a peaceful, beautiful day. 
and um, shine, let's shine our light for Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.